Well, uh, firstly, I want to thank you all very much for coming here today. Um, this is a very important announcement uh, for Irish rugby. Um, I'm absolutely delighted, and uh, the IRFU are absolutely delighted to have Joe on board as uh, the new uh, national team coach. Um, we wish him every success uh, over, the, over the next while, um, and uh, we all know what Joe can do, what he's done for Leinster, and hopefully he'll bring all of that experience uh, to the national team. Your overriding sense at this stage now that it has been announced that you're Declan Kidney's replacement? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really think too much in terms of, of previous. Um, it's, it's still, for me, pretty new in the job. It only just happened today uh, to be confirmed. And so for me, it's about trying to quickly look ahead and, and start planning forward. It's uh, obviously a, dif a difficult thing when I've currently got my hands pretty much full. So, um, you know, over the, over the next four to six weeks, hopefully I, I get a little bit of uh, time and, and those windows are sufficient to start getting my head around the, the, the new role. How difficult a decision was it, uh, leaving Leinster with uh, a year to go in your contract? Um, it was made really easy by Leinster. Uh, I had a lot of encouragement <coughs> from the professional game board. I'd like to thank Ben Underwood and, and Mick Dawson, um, the chairman and, and CEO of Leinster, um, because I, I felt that it was uh, their support that gave me the confidence to, to um, kind of follow through and, and ended the discussions. And, and now, um, you know, I'd, I certainly appreciate their support in, in being uh, confirmed as, as the new Irish coach. And have you any details on your backroom team at this stage? Um, <laughs> No, I've just got my own details today, so uh, it's a little bit hard to, to project anything further ahead than that at this stage. Um, I, as I say, I, we had a, uh, Philip said we had a pretty big game on, on Saturday, and um, that, was a, that was a massive focus for me last week. And uh, you know, I, I would like to thank both Leinster and the RFU for um, trying to fit me in and around schedules so that, uh, so that we could get a little bit of cohesion between my day job currently and uh, a prospective job. Joe, um, you did speak before about wanting to finish at Leinster at the end of next year so you could possibly go back home. So what kind of change your mind to, to stay on here? I think part of it is the, is the flexibility. Um, you know, the windows are suffocating, but in between the windows, there is a little bit more scope to maybe get back uh, and forth. Obviously, I've got a, uh, a daughter who's back in New Zealand. She's uh, studying, at least she tells me she's studying, and I hope she is. Um, and so at, at this stage, it, it's nice to be able to get backwards and forwards, obviously, to see family. But I, I'd have to say my family were part of the decision. They are very settled here. Um, obviously, it, it would have helped if, if Tira Nua had won the Senior Cup. Um, but my son's got over that disappointment now. He's, he's going to have another try next year. And... Um, my, my daughter's enjoying school and, and uh, you know, I, I've spoken out lately about our smaller son um, and he is looked after superbly at his, at his school, Stratford National School, and, and that was a, a, a big part of our decision making as well because, um, you know, it, it is inevitably a family decision. Joe, um, it, it says here in the release that uh, Les Case is going to uh, look after the Irish team during the summer. You're probably going to oversee that as well or travel over to North America with him as well and at the same time do you kind of feel any sympathy for Les that he kind of wasn't maybe as high profile and do you kind of have any sympathies that he maybe hasn't got the job at the same time? Yeah, I, to be honest, um, I, I know Les reads me well. I worked with him a little bit when we tried to get him into Leinster when I first started and so yeah, I, I think he's incredibly capable and, and for me, I, I'm pretty busy as I said in the next four weeks that allows Les the, uh, the opportunity to get that team together. Um, Les has spoken to me a couple of times anyway, just in my role as Leinster coach, to let me know who's involved at this stage, who's in the, in the wider reckoning. Obviously, we're, um, we've got to wait until a couple of names hopefully get pulled out of the hat tomorrow uh, at 11 o'clock, and the more they get pulled out, the better. And then uh, I think Les has, has a pretty, pretty good list of, of who else is available to, to maybe tour North America and also go on the development tour to Georgia. 
when you came to Leinster three seasons ago, or almost three seasons ago, you aimed to make them the, the best club rugby passing side there was in the Northern Hemisphere. Would you have similar ambitions uh, for, the, for the, national, the national team uh, at European level, at least? I mean? Again, that was, that was something that wasn't meant to leak into the public domain. That was, you know, we had a few key targets. There's a few others um, that I won't divulge, but I think when you get your group together, you have a look at what they can do. Uh, I had the chance with Leinster. I knew I was coming three months beforehand. I had a good chance. We obviously, when I was with Clermont, we, we played them in a, a quarterfinal of the Heineken Cup. So I had a good chance to have a good look at some of their players. And, and I just thought that there were some things that they did really well and some things that, uh, um, you know, if they could do a little bit better, maybe we could grow our game. And so I've had a good chance to have a look at a, a lot of the Irish players. And, and once we kind of get our collective together, We'll try to get some process oriented goals, no doubt, together that, that will try to um, improve performance or, or at least make us as competitive as possible.